Jesus' last words to his disciples and to us were to go and make disciples. We're to discover new disciples. Those are Jesus' commands to us. And then he tells us to, uh, to develop new disciples. He tells us how to do that. He says to baptize them and to teach them his commands. But then we're not to just sit there. A new disciple needs to be developed and then deployed. And in essence, to start the process over as they go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to those who have not heard it. Now, most times this deployment happens right where we're at. It happens in our school, in our workplace, in our communities. But sometimes God calls us to, to go somewhere different. This month, we have a very unique opportunity as a church. We have five individuals within our church who have felt that God has called them to be deployed, believing that it's better to be doing what God has called them to than to be comfortable. These are interesting stories. I want you to listen and hear from them. We've been going to the village for the past uh, seven, almost eight years now. Out of the desire to be a part of the rebuilding process of Liberia, after uh, the country has gone through 14 years of civil conflict. It is called ULECAF. We are part of the funding members. Over the years, uh, ULECAF has been actively involved in Liberia with the rebuilding process. Our biggest project we have undertaken there is the establishment of a Christian college. This college is uh, producing young men and women who are being used by God Close to 200 students have graduated from uh, this Christian college. We have some of them working uh, on some of the mission stations, working in churches, even in banks, running orphanages and uh, even nutrition center. One hour for Christ is about, if you work eight hours, you just take one hour of that, donate that money to poor children to help them go to school. Six years ago, a team from Village started to work on the library. A year ago, we dedicated the library. It serves the community, and so far, it's the only, only resource center that you have in that whole county of over 600,000 people. I will not be going to Liberia, though I will not uh, transition to Liberia, but I'm going to work from the state side. It's going to be a full-time ministry for us. The task we've been called to perform is huge. We need wisdom. We need God's guidance and direction. Step of faith we're taking, where we're going to totally rely on Him uh, from day to day. But with your prayers, I know God is going to um, take us through. My name is Tom, and I live in Port Allsworth, Alaska. For the last two months, I've been working as the mentor for the TLC men's program, and I've been just providing spiritual guidance and uh, just through transformative relationships in, in the home. I live in a house with, with four young men, and they're all different kind of uh, levels of growth and maturity. Of uh, the, one of the men, he, uh, he was one of the guys that was kind of up in the air, not sure what was gonna happen. And turns out he, things worked out for him to be able to come into it, and he's been doing very well. And uh, the environment where he came from, it's, been, uh, it, it's just been a, a great change for him to see, and a great change for him to be in. And he, uh, he ended up giving his life to the Lord in the opening weeks of the program. It's been really great to see uh, the students have questions of want, wanting to know more about the truth, wanting to know more about the things that we're studying in the Bible. Um, as I came out here a few months ago, came out here on, on fairly short notice and just walking by faith knowing that this is where God has called me. And uh, it, he's blessed me with a lot of support coming in, and, but prayer for continued support would be, uh, would be great. My name is Amanda Rodriguez, and I first became involved with Crossroads Missions here in Piedras Negras when I was in college. I did an internship um, with other college interns here and worked alongside the full-time staff. My name is Victor Rodriguez. I was in Crossroads since I was 15 years old. I was involved with the ministry through the church in which I assisted. Through Crossroads, they have been uh, my children's home, a uh, home for the handicapped, a hospital ministry of serving food, also a uh, girls club, kind of like uh, Girl Scouts, also working at uh, the Christian school that we partner with. 
uh, hemos estado involucrados como pareja en, en el ministerio de, de la alabanza en la iglesia en Italia, inglés, en la iglesia Viles Bible y también hemos trabajado en el Colegio de Libertad como maestros de inglés y de educación física. The main way that you can be praying for us right now is just during this um, transition phase. I'm still working on raising my support, um, that it would be a smooth transition and that um, God will continue to use us um, through the transition phase and through the full-time working phase. You know, it's always interesting to look back and to see how God has been working in our lives. For both Tom and Amanda, God used their willingness to serve on short-term mission trips to prepare their hearts for something even bigger. So as we join together this month, we're all being stretched to be all in, to make Jesus a priority in our gift giving. As we do that, we are helping to enable the ministry of Tom, of Victor and Amanda, of Carney and Lydia, Ultimately, we have a direct hand in the ministry that God's called them to and the furthering of God's kingdom. To God be the glory for the great things He has done, the things He's doing, and the things He will do. Are you all in this Christmas? Well, good morning. My name is Stephanie Beatty, and I am the Director of Finance here at Village Bible Church. And we've made it a tradition to all come together as a church and give our largest, most extravagant gifts to Jesus at Christmas. This all-in campaign helps us as a church, as well as each of us personally, to keep Jesus first on our Christmas list. This also allows us to each be a part of impacting God's kingdom right here in our own communities and also around the world. As we just saw, one of the areas that we get to invest in through the All In campaign this year is launching five of our own into full-time missions. This is an incredible opportunity and is unprecedented in the life of Village Bible Church. Each of us jumping All In will help launch the ministry of Tom, of Amanda and Victor, and of Carney and Lydia. In doing so, we each get to have a direct hand in the furthering of God's kingdom through their ministries. Well, I know it's hard to believe, but Christmas is just five days away. And Pastor Keith is right. Making Jesus a priority in our gift giving is not an easy thing to do. In many ways, it's countercultural at Christmas time. But we've been challenged to make Jesus the priority in our gift giving this year by giving him our biggest gift of Christmas. Specifically, the goal set before us was this. If you're not already a part of giving a 10% tithe back to God, consider, consider taking that step of faith and obedience for the month of December. Cut some expenses that are self-focused and redirect those dollars back to God and to his work. And if you already give 10% or more to back to God, consider giving your regular tithe for the month of December, plus an extra month's tithe or maybe more as a Christmas gift back to Jesus. Well, the numbers tell us that, that this church family is already investing in eternal ways through our church. We're halfway through the month and we're right on track with our monthly miss missions and ministry budget. And if you've given, we do want to say thank you. If you haven't, please make that a priority this month. And already, one third of you have joined in giving an extra all-in gift of some type. And not surprising, we're a third of our way towards that financial goal too. So thank you if you're a part of that. That means that when the remaining two-thirds of you decide to jump in this month, it's realistic to expect that we can meet that target. But that will only happen if we all come on board and participate at the level that God is leading us to. My family has been reminded this month of the importance of investing in things with an eternal value, and that reminder has made the decision for us to be all in, clearer than ever before. On December 7th, we anxiously awaited the news of the arrival of our first niece. But the message we received that day from Phil's brother was full of broken expectations. While we are absolutely still celebrating the life of precious Brooke Beatty, like Tim spoke about in a sermon last Sunday, the words NICU and then Down syndrome threw everyone a curve. And in that moment, we knew their lives would never be the same. Suddenly, picking out physical gifts to send their family for Christmas seemed so empty 
The reality that stuff is just stuff seems so clear. Now, don't get me wrong. There will still be stockings full of treats and presents under the tree at the Beatty house this Christmas. I don't think there's anything wrong with giving carefully chosen gifts to those that we love. But as I celebrate Christ this Christmas, I don't want my priorities to be wrapped in paper and bows. I look around this room, and I know that many of you understand full well what I am saying. Our church family, not just in the past year or the past months, but in the very recent days, have faced illnesses and diagnoses. We've suffered loss of loved ones, and we've experienced brokenness that brings clarity to investing in eternity, not just with our finances, but also through moments together with words of encouragement and love and in time invested in each other and in prayer. So my hope is that we would all be all in, that we would all participate at some level in this eternal investment. Some of you this morning have very little to spend on gifts this year because, well, quite frankly, it's been a tough year. Others have experienced great prosperity, and of course, most of us fall somewhere right in between. No matter the extent of your ability to give, there is a place for each one of us to be all in and to invest eternally through Village Bible Church this Christmas. Now, the important thing is that we're all part of this together at whatever God lay, level God lays on our hearts and enables us to give, because it's together that God is going to do great things in us and through us. Now, you can give back to the Lord today, either on your phone or by putting a check in the offering boxes on the back wall. You can grab an envelope in the pew rack in front of you to designate your regular offering or your Christmas offering. And of course, you can join us at any time during the month of December in this all-in campaign. Now let's fill the remaining household icons on those charts this week so that next Sunday when we all come together, we can see a full chart and truly say that Village Bible Church is all in.